Jay Simpson, a once celebrated American football hero who later found fame in Hollywood, saw his life take a dramatic turn in 1994. Accused of the brutal murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman, Simpson became the central figure in a sensational trial that gripped the nation. Prior to the murders, Simpson had leveraged his athletic talent into a lucrative career, amassing a net worth estimated to be over $10.8 million in 1992. He also transitioned into acting, further solidifying his financial standing. However, the ensuing legal battles and his eventual conviction for armed robbery significantly eroded his wealth. Today, various sources estimate his net worth to be around $3 million, a stark contrast to his financial peak. While Simpson was acquitted in the criminal trial, a cloud still hung over him. In a separate civil case, the jury found him liable for the wrongful deaths of Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. This verdict came with a hefty price tag, a $33.5 million judgment awarded to the victim's families. However, Simpson managed to shield most of his income from creditors. State laws protected his pension and royalties, leaving him with a comfortable stream of income despite the massive debt. This legal maneuver further fueled public outrage, as it appeared Simpson could avoid financial responsibility for a civil jury's verdict. O.J. Simpson, once a gridiron legend revered for his electrifying speed and jukes, saw his life take a sharp turn after his football career. The celebrated running back, whose name was synonymous with agility and dominance on the field, found himself at the center of a media firestorm in 1994. Accused of the brutal murders of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman, Simpson faced a sensational trial that transfixed the nation. Though acquitted of the criminal charges, a civil jury found him liable for their wrongful deaths, a verdict that came with a hefty $33.5 million judgment. Despite the legal cloud, Simpson continued to make headlines. In 2007, he was sentenced to nine years in prison for an armed robbery and kidnapping incident in Las Vegas. Paroled in 2017, he now resides in Nevada, maintaining a presence on a platform similar to the defunct Twitter, where he boasts over 900,000 followers. He's also reportedly working on a documentary chronicling his life, aiming for a $3.5 million payday. O.J. Simpson, a name synonymous with power and grace on the gridiron, wasn't always a professional superstar. Before electrifying the NFL, he carved his legend in college football. Nicknamed The Juice for his elusive running style, O.J. terrorized defenses as part of the USC Trojans. His dominance culminated in the most prestigious individual award in college football, the Heisman Trophy, during his senior year. This dazzling achievement cemented his status as a generational talent and propelled him to the top of the 1969 NFL AFL draft. The Buffalo Bills, hungry for a game-changer, didn't hesitate to select OJ with the coveted first overall pick. And OJ didn't disappoint. Over the next nine seasons, he became a relentless force for the Bills. His excellence was undeniable, earning him five consecutive Pro Bowl and first-team All-Pro selections from 1972 to 1976. These accolades weren't just shiny trophies, they were a reflection of his consistent dominance on the field. But OJ's impact extended beyond awards. He led the league in rushing yards a staggering four times, twice topped the charts in rushing touchdowns, and even claimed the league's scoring title in 1975. O.J. Simpson in Buffalo wasn't just a player, he was a force of nature, leaving defenses grasping at straws and rewriting the record books. He became the first running back in NFL history to crack the 2,000-yard barrier, an astronomical feat made even more impressive by the fact he accomplished it in a shortened 14-game season. This wasn't just about racking up yards, it was about leaving defenders in the dust, game after game. The electrifying performance cemented his place as a legend and earned him the coveted NFL Most Valuable Player Award, the league's highest individual honor. But OJ's impact wasn't confined to statistics and trophies. He carved his name deeper into the record books by setting the mark for the highest single-season rushing average, a staggering 143.1 yards per game. This wasn't just about raw power, it was a testament to his mesmerizing agility and breakaway speed. He could turn on a dime, leaving tacklers grasping at air, and outrun defenders down the sideline with seemingly effortless grace. O.J.'s brilliance transcended the football field. After hanging up his cleats following a stint with the San Francisco 49ers in 1979, he embarked on successful careers in both acting and broadcasting, proving his charisma and talent extended far beyond the gridiron. 
both the College Football Hall of Fame 1983 and the Pro Football Hall of Fame 1985 recognized his exceptional contributions to the sport, cementing his status as a true football icon. Early Life and Education O.J. Simpson's roots trace back to the vibrant streets of San Francisco, California. Raised alongside his siblings Melvin, Shirley, and the late Carmelita, he was nurtured by his strong-willed mother, Eunice, who managed a local hospital. His father, Jimmy Lee, navigated the city with a double life, holding jobs at the Federal Reserve and as a bank custodian while also being a celebrated drag queen in the San Francisco Bay Area. Jimmy Lee later came out as gay and sadly passed away from AIDS in 1986. O.J.'s name itself held a story. Inspired by a French actor his aunt admired, he was christened Orenthal, a name he wouldn't discover until a surprised teacher uttered it in third grade. From birth, everyone knew him as O.J. However, his early years weren't without challenges. A bout with rickets as a child forced him to wear leg braces until the age of five, shaping his characteristic bow-legged stance. O.J. Simpson's upbringing in San Francisco's Petrero Hill neighborhood included challenges during his teenage years. He involved himself with a local street gang and faced brief incarceration. Despite difficulties, encouragement from influential individuals like baseball star Willie Mays helped him redirect his path. He actively participated in his high school's football program, showcasing early athletic talent. Personal life. O.J. Simpson's tumultuous relationships, a look back. O.J. Simpson's love life has been as complex and headline-grabbing as his football career. Here's a closer look at his marriages and relationships. Marguerite Whitley, 1967 to 1979, a young love cut short. O.J. married his high school sweetheart, Marguerite Whitley, at the tender age of 19. Together, they built a young family, welcoming three children, Arnell, Jason, and Aaron. Tragedy struck in 1979 when their son Aaron drowned at the heartbreaking age of two. The couple, already facing challenges, eventually divorced that same year. Nicole Brown, 1977 to 1995, a fairy tale tarnished by abuse. The cracks in OJ's first marriage began to show when he met Nicole Brown in 1977 while still married to Marguerite. Their connection blossomed into a romance, and after his retirement from football in 1985, they tied the knot. The couple had two beautiful children, Sydney and Justin. However, the fairy tale facade hit a dark secret, a pattern of domestic violence. In 1989, O.J. pleaded no contest to spousal abuse charges, casting a long shadow over their relationship. Despite a divorce in 1992, they briefly attempted to reconcile in 1993, ultimately ending in a permanent separation. Christy Prati, 1995 to 2008, a controversial later chapter. Following his acquittal on murder charges in 1995, O.J. entered a relationship with Christy Prati. The significant age difference raised eyebrows, and Prati later came forward alleging feelings of unease and even fear during their 13-year relationship. College Football Despite his high school heroics, O.J. Simpson's path to a prestigious four-year college initially faced academic roadblocks. Choosing to forego military service, he landed at City College of San Francisco in 1965. Here, his raw talent exploded onto the scene. He wasn't just a star, he was a force on both offense and defense, earning the coveted title of Junior College All-American running back. This electrifying performance turned heads with universities across the nation vying for him as a transfer student. Fueled by a childhood admiration for the team, O.J. ultimately set his sights on the University of Southern California, USC, for his final two years of college football. Under the watchful eye of head coach John McKay, O.J. was entrusted with the critical running back position. This proved to be a match made in football heaven. Simpson quickly established himself as a dominant force, leading the nation in rushing yards for a staggering two years in a row, 1967 and 1968. Each season, he piled up awe-inspiring statistics, leaving defenses grasping at straws and fans in the stands roaring with excitement. 1967, Simpson's junior year, brought him heartbreakingly close to college football's holy grail, the Heisman Trophy. However, the award ultimately went to Gary Bebin, the star quarterback of their arch-rivals, UCLA. This rivalry would only intensify as the season reached its climax, culminating in the legendary Victory Bell game. With the clock ticking down and USC trailing by a seemingly insurmountable six points, tension crackled in the air. Then, in a moment forever etched in college football lore, O.J. Simpson exploded. 
He broke free from the clutches of despairing defenders, igniting a blur of white and cardinal across the field. This wasn't just a run, it was a defiant roar, a 64-yard sprint towards destiny. The touchdown not only tied the game, but it cemented Simpson's place in history as a game-changer. The play itself transcended the mere act of scoring, becoming a celebrated moment in 20th century football, a testament to Simpson's raw talent and unwavering determination. O.J. Simpson's athletic prowess extended beyond his iconic 64-yard touchdown run in the 1967 Victory Bell game. His performance was captured in the famous Arnold Freeberg painting O.J. Simpson Breaks for Daylight, highlighting his impact. His achievements during this period went beyond that single play as he received the Walter Camp Award and earned unanimous All-American recognition twice. Beyond football, Simpson displayed talent in track and field. Though ultimately losing a 100M race, he held the world record in the 4 by 110 yard relay prior to joining USC. Continuing his dominance in his senior year, Simpson rushed for impressive yardage and touchdowns, securing the Heisman Trophy and other prestigious awards. He set a then-record margin of victory for the Heisman with 1,750 points. Although facing defeat in the Rose Bowl, Simpson demonstrated his skill with a notable 80-yard touchdown run. Professional Football Career The Buffalo Bills, coming off a challenging 1968 season, secured the first overall pick in the 1969 A. Felon Fell Common Draft. O.J. Simpson, a highly sought-after running back, became their selection. Contract negotiations proved complex, with Simpson seeking a significant increase from the standard rookie contract offered by the Bills. This resulted in a temporary impasse, with Simpson publicly considering a career in acting. Ultimately, an agreement was reached, marking a noteworthy development in professional football contracts at the time. O.J. Simpson entered the NFL with significant anticipation, but his initial seasons faced challenges. He averaged only 622 rushing yards per year during his first three seasons, prompting concerns about his performance. Head coach John Rauch's offensive strategy emphasized a balanced approach which limited Simpson's rushing opportunities. He often served in blocking and receiving roles instead. After Rauch's departure, two additional head coaches implemented offensive systems that initially struggled to utilize Simpson effectively. Finally, in 1972, Lou Saban became head coach and made Simpson the focal point of the offense. This shift marked a turning point in Simpson's career. O.J. Simpson achieved a significant milestone in 1972, surpassing 1,000 rushing yards for the first time in his career with a league-leading total of 1,251. The following year, he etched his name in NFL history by becoming the first player to break the 2,000-yard rushing barrier, amassing a record-breaking 2,003 yards and 12 touchdowns. This feat was particularly impressive as it occurred within a 14-game season, unlike the current 16-game format. Notably, Simpson broke both the 2,000-yard mark and Jim Brown's single-season rushing record of 1,863 yards in the final game of the 1973 season against the New York Jets. His outstanding performance that year earned him the coveted NFL MVP award and the Burt Bell Award. While other players have surpassed the 2,000-yard mark in subsequent seasons, Simpson's achievement remains remarkable due to the shorter season format in which it occurred. He continues to hold the record for rushing yards in a 14-game season. From 1974 to 1976, O.J. Simpson solidified his dominance on the field, consistently surpassing 1,000 rushing yards each season. 1974, despite overcoming a knee injury, Simpson surpassed 1,000 rushing yards and became the league's active rushing leader, a title he held until his retirement. He also made his first and only playoff appearance, contributing a touchdown but falling short with the Bills. 1975, he regained the rushing title with 1,817 yards and 16 touchdowns, adding career-high marks in receiving yards and touchdowns. 1976, leading the league in rushing for the third consecutive year, Simpson posted 1,503 yards and 8 touchdowns. His standout performance, including a record-breaking 273 rushing yards against the Lions, couldn't prevent a loss for the Bills. A heated altercation marred a game against the Patriots that season. O.J. Simpson and Patriots player Mel Lunsford exchanged punches after a tackle, leading to a brawl involving both teams. Both were ejected and the Patriots won the game. Simpson faced a shortened 1977 season due to injury. Acting Career 
O.J. Simpson dabbled in acting while still at USC and continued pursuing it even after entering professional football. His early appearances included uncredited roles and television series. He later branched out into films like The Klansman and The Towering Inferno. Simpson, initially hesitant about a full-fledged acting career, eventually aimed for recognition, seeking an Oscar or Emmy. He strategically avoided stereotypical roles and honed his skills alongside established actors. Commercials and comedic cameo appearances like Back to the Beach also marked his career. He landed a recurring role in the Naked Gun series and was reportedly considered for a major role in The Terminator. Beyond acting, Simpson explored sports commentary and even hosted an episode of Saturday Night Live. O.J. Simpson, before his legal troubles, starred in a pilot for Frogman, a tower action series with similarities to The A-Team. Production wrapped in 1994, shortly before his highly publicized arrest. The series, envisioned for NBC, remained in limbo as they evaluated its potential. However, the project never saw the light of day due to Simpson's legal entanglements. During a search of his residence, authorities discovered the Frogman, pilot footage, script, and dailies. Prosecutors explored reports that Simpson, playing the leader of ex-Navy SEALs, received training, including knife handling, for the role. Interestingly, a scene involved him using a knife against a woman. Despite this discovery, this information was not presented as evidence at his trial. Frogman, a pilot, never aired. In 1994, NBC executive Warren Littlefield predicted the Frogman pilot, starring O.J. Simpson, would never see the light of day if he was found guilty of his criminal charges. However, if acquitted, TV journalists speculated an immediate broadcast. Typically, two-hour pilots end up as TV movies, regardless of series greenlighting. But this instance wasn't typical. Public fascination with the Simpson trial fueled anticipation for anything related to him, leading Warner Brothers and NBC to envision a massive Super Bowl-sized audience for Frogman. Despite potential profits estimated at $14 million, the studios ultimately chose not to release the pilot. Co-star Evan Handler viewed this decision as a rare display of integrity in the industry, commenting, it's just about the only evidence you have that there is some dignity in the advertising and television business. Juiced was Simpson's improv-based hidden camera prank TV show in 2006. He pranked people and yelled, you've been juiced? Each episode began with topless strippers and his rap song. He tried to sell his white Bronco with a bullet hole and his autograph. He pretended to cheat with a man's girlfriend and then became an old. Tell us what you like the most about O.J. Simpson. Thank you for watching. Share with your friends if you liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.